What's up? How are you guys today? We are down here at Frankie's Free Range Meat and I figured it was about time to show you guys all the cuts of steak we have and it's kind of crazy. I've never done that in the several years we've been in business but we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 different steaks on Frankie's Free Range Meat. Sometimes we have 14 or 15 but it's pretty much every possible cut of meat on the cow that can be made into a steak. We're going to start at the front of the animal and go towards the back of the animal. And, and the main thing I'm going to do here today for you guys is explain the texture and the flavor and which steaks that I like the most. Yeah, and for the most part, all of them are pretty enjoyable, depends on what you're craving. So here in the front of the animal, the shoulder, we have the chuck component. So this is our grass-fed chuck steak. Usually this comes as like a whole chuck roast and several pounds, which we also sell. And you can see there's a little bit of a variance here, but the nice thing about the chuck steak is you have different flavors depending on the part of the steak. The most significant difference is from the big part of the chuck to the small part of the chuck. So when you cook this and you taste it, the texture and flavor of both are different. It's definitely not my favorite steak, but it's by far the most affordable. And you know, if you're on a budget, if you're trying to get some decent fatty meat in your diet, it's a pretty good choice. Also from the chuck, is the petite tender, which is kind of an unknown and definitely underrated cut. Uh, this is actually packaged uh, two petite tenders together. It's very nice, it's lean. You can cut kind of like very small filet medallion steaks. Restaurants will even serve this as like a petite filet. Now, actual tenderloin is way, way, way more tender than this. You know, it'll melt in your mouth like butter. This has a bit more of a texture to it. There's a bit more fat, some connective tissue, but, but the flavor is excellent. Uh, still kind of mild, not super flavorful. Definitely one of my favorite cuts though because of its affordability and if you want something tender. And then we have the flat iron steak. It's just kind of an unknown steak and you know it, it's pretty labor intensive to remove it. And there's usually a, a, a little nerve running down the middle of the steak uh, which is actually removed here. And if you have the whole flat iron, it, it's kind of like a, it's like this shape and it's kind of long and it has that nerve running down the middle. It's relatively lean and that's why I like it. You know, if you want something affordable, you're trying to get lean steak in your diet, flat iron is kind of the go-to cut. The flavor isn't spectacular, but the texture is nice and it's a change of pace. Uh, really, that's, that's what I consider flat iron for. And, and the way we have it portioned here it is what actually makes it enjoyable. You know, if you had the whole piece of flat iron and you had to butcher it yourself, that's where the negative connotation is. But because we have these cuts of steak, you know, a certain way, you can actually eat them very well. Uh, two most popular, we have the ribeye and the New York strip. The ribeye is from the rib section, which is in front of the short loin section. Now, you know, the rib section has the ribeye steak as well as the beef ribs. And then the, the short loin section is really just the New York strip and the tender loin. So you guys are very, very familiar with these cuts. We have the bone and ribeye and the bone and porterhouse, as well as this is our prime ribeye and this is our boneless New York strip. These are our bread and butter cuts. These are what people order the most of. You know, I used to work in a steakhouse in the city waiting tables, and this is what we served a lot of. Ribeye is, I mean, in my opinion, it's the better steak. It's more tender. It has more flavor. The marbling tends to be higher. The reason I like New York Strip is because I've been eating leaner meat in my diet, and although the New York Strip has a tougher texture, it is still incredibly tender, especially compared to some of these other cuts. So, you know, when people say that the New York strip steak is tougher than the ribeye steak, it's in comparison to the ribeye. It's still a very, very tender piece of meat. And that strip loin does have that, you know, strip of fat on the outside. So it's nice to kind of sear it on the side in the pan and then use that rendered fat to finish searing the steak. It can be highly marbled as well, but usually not as much as the ribeye. And what I usually do with this is I'll, I'll trim the fat off and sometimes I'll even slice it up. But... It's a very nice, quick, easy, lean cut of steak to saute in the pan. And this, you know, if I'm serving people, if I want something really enjoyable, ribeye is definitely my favorite. And, and from a cost perspective, you know, it's way more affordable per pound for us to do bone-in steaks, which is why we have them. The added bonus of the porterhouse is you have part of the filet on the other side. Of course, uh, 
I guess the most famous steakhouse in New York City, Peter Luger. This is this is their go-to steak, which I like because you know you have the nice mix of that New York strip and then the buttery, tender, slightly less flavorful filet. Moving on to what I refer to as the belly area. It's also called the plate. We have the hanger steak, which technically isn't connected to the belly. It's kind of like on the outside. We have the skirt as well as the flank. And this is in order of the position on the belly. So this is kind of in the back of the belly. This is more towards the middle. And this is the top. If you've never had hanger steak, it's probably the most flavorful steak from like a mineral perspective. You can really taste the iron, and it's super duper flavorful and enjoyable. It's definitely not something I would eat every day, but if you want to surprise people and do like some fajitas or like a marinated steak or throw something on the grill, and again, compared to the New York Strip and ribeye, every other steak here for the most part is way more affordable, of course, with the exception of the tenderloin. So the hanger steak, super duper flavorful, usually has a nice amount of fat. Skirt steak, same exact thing. One of the most flavorful parts of the animal. It, it's usually very, very thin. It's, it's an incredibly long steak, and then we cut portions of it. I like skirt because although it's not tender, it, it does fall apart pretty easily when you chew it, and it, it has a unique flavor. As with every single cut of beef here, the flavor, of course, is unique. You know, when you taste a ribeye, oh, that tastes like a ribeye. Strip tastes like a strip. Chuck tastes like a chuck. Since these parts are from the belly, which is the most flavorful part of the animal, the flavor is more unique. And we do also have actual beef belly for sale on Frankie's Strange Meat if you want a super duper flavorful cut. Flank steak isn't as flavorful as these two other cuts, but I really like the texture of flank steak. And when you chew it, it kind of shreds apart in your mouth. It's like the muscle fibers just want to tear apart and usually we have the flank, it's a bit uh, bigger, it's kind of like a thin cut. But these are all incredibly underrated, very enjoyable steaks, great for marinades, great for a nice change of pace in your diet. And you know, over the course of several years I've been carnivore, you know, I'll eat ribeyes for a week straight, I'll have chuck for two weeks straight, maybe I'll have flank for a couple days. You know, I really do enjoy the variance in the diet. And then we have the sirloin, which is towards the back of the animal where a lot of cuts come from. At the top of the sirloin, you have the pecania, which is also known as the rump cap. I did a whole video talking about pecania, I think a couple years ago now, and I, I know I keep saying these cuts are underrated, but pecania is probably objectively the best one for its price point because the meat on the pecania is incredibly tender. It has a very nice flavor, almost as tender as filet, and it has a super delicious fat cap. So there's a lot of flavor, a lot of fat, a lot of things you can do with this. We sell the whole pecania as well, and we cut it up into steaks. And more importantly, for the amount of fat and the tenderness you're getting, the price is not beat. Then we have the famous filet mignon tenderloin steak, the most expensive part of the animal, and there's a reason for that. It is the most tender part of the animal. I really like filet mignon. I can eat it every day. You know, now with my diet, since I'm eating leaner meat, it's probably my current favorite. However, it's so expensive, I do not eat it every day. But uh, maybe I should. And one thing I like using filet mignon for is tartare uh, because it's super easy to cut and the seasonings and the spices that you put in that tartare are going to kind of be the star of the show as opposed to the flavor of the meat. And then as we... Uh, move down the sirloin. The top sirloin fillet is next to the tenderloin, and this is not really that common of a cut. Um, we we cut it like this, and and uh, one of our distributors sends it to us like this. But the actual whole piece of sirloin, it's it's pretty large. It's like like this big, and what we do for for these steaks is we cut that chunk in half, and then we cut those into steaks against the grain. So the reason we do this is because these are the most affordable steaks we have on Frankie Strange Meat. Usually we can sell these for like three or four dollars each. I mean, you guys go into a supermarket, you're not gonna find any cut of meat priced that low, mainly because they don't portion it 
that small and they don't even get those types of cuts in. So going further down the sirloin, we have the tri-tip, which uh, people are really familiar with. Uh, it's very popular in barbecuing, although I've never you know, smoked a tri-tip before. And it just has a really nice balance of fat, flavor, and tenderness. You know, they cook it low and slow, it falls apart. Very, very delicious barbecue application. And although a lot of these steaks are very affordable, you can't really get them in most places. Like, like the petite tender, the chuck, the flat iron, most of these steaks on the, on the belly here, and half of these, they don't even sell them in the supermarket. You go into a supermarket, you're only going to get like ribeye strip, uh, filet mignon, and maybe if you're lucky, you'll get a few other cuts. So the nice thing on Frankie's Strange Meat is we're able to get all of these different cuts in, as well as a bunch of other things like ribs, the belly I mentioned, and just things that you're not able to get in the supermarket. So our final cut of the day is the bavette steak. And this is, I know I keep saying a lot of these cuts are unknown. This one is really, really unknown. And we're actually almost sold out of these because of how nicely they are portioned. People tend to enjoy them. And this is also referred to as the flap meat. Uh, this is on the bottom of the sirloin. And when you eat it, it, it kind of falls apart. It's not like the flank steak where it, like, it's firm together and it shreds apart in your mouth. Uh, the bavette steak, aka flat meat, it, it really is kind of flappy. Like it, it's not held together that well, but it, it has a nice amount of fat. It has an excellent flavor. And I mean, guys, it's beef. It's always going to taste good. You can't complain about it. Everyone is going to have their favorites. And since I've given you guys kind of an idea of the taste and texture of all of these, I guess I'll give you, you know, if I, if I was here right now, what steak would I want to eat that I think I would enjoy the most? Oh, it's so hard. I've always, I've always liked the porterhouse. I've always liked filet mignon. And really, really skirt and flank are, are, are really, really up there for me. So top five for me, porterhouse, filet mignon, flank skirt, and ribeye. Those are going to be my top five. But all of these cuts are incredibly delicious. If you guys haven't tried out some of them, I encourage you to either get them on Frankie's Free Range Meat or go to your local supermarket, your local butcher, see if they have it. As I've said several times already, you know, the reason most places don't have all of these cuts is because people don't buy them. You know, when you're not selling a high enough volume, the standard American consumer doesn't really know about this stuff. But, you know, when you're eating high quality grass fed red meat every day as a healthy component of your diet, which is also delicious, you do start wanting to add some variety here and there. So thank you guys for joining me today. You can check out all of this stuff on Frankie's FreeRangeMeat.com. Let me know how you guys enjoy this. If you have any questions below and outside of that, please drop a like on the video. Leave me a comment, guys. Subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week. And be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. As I said, guys, frankiestrangemeat.com. You can also go to frank .com to check out my other business. Thanks again for joining, guys. And I'll see you for tomorrow.